Welcome to this special edition of Hannity, Real Russia Collusion. I'm Janine Pirro, in tonight for Sean. The deep state is starting to fracture. This week, shocking new reports are revealing how one-time high-ranking DOJ official Bruce Orr was actively coordinating with members of Hillary Clinton's opposition research team during the 2016 election. The Hill's John Solomon unearthed hundreds of emails, texts, and handwritten memos between Bruce Orr and the ex-foreign spy and dirty dossier author Christopher Steele. The communications detail various meetings, the exchange of intelligence, and a coordinated effort between someone who was the fourth highest person at Obama's Justice Department and a former foreign agent working on behalf of the Clinton campaign at a consulting firm called Fusion GPS. Other documents show that Bruce Orr was also in touch with the founder of Fusion GPS, Glenn Simpson. He even knew about Simpson's effort to leak the dirty dossier to the press prior to the election, writing, quote, it was Glenn's Hail Mary attempt. This is major developing news and we're only scratching the surface. But the mainstream media couldn't care less. They were too busy bashing President Trump for everything under the sun. Take a look. It's a, a demagogue's toolkit that he uses it, that he uses and he uses it effectively. This guy is certifiably insane. He's the most prolific liar to ever be president. He's also a misogynist. A little coward. Disgusting, deranged, abusive. The president's rather distant relationship with the truth. That's a laughable proposition, but nothing new coming from this president. President Trump's newest attempt to strip away our legitimacy, uh, legitimacy and indeed our humanity. More and more, I think, hate movement is the proper term for what's going on. Allowing Donald Trump rallies to go out live to viewers from beginning to end is delivering a poison to the bloodstream of the nation. I feel appalled. I, I feel appalled as an American by the divisiveness, by the toxicity. I like it. Joining us now is the author of The Russia Hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, and Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. Sarah, I'm going to start with you. I mean, the new uh, emails that have been unearthed and all the information that we found uh, about this week indicate that there's a connection between Bruce Orr, Nellie Orr, his wife, Fusion mm -hmm. GPS, for whom she worked, Glenn Simpson, and mm -hmm. Christopher for steel. Kind of explain that to the audience. Well, this is highly significant, Judge Jeanine, because what it shows is a very a contentious relationship between the way that they felt about Donald Trump, which we know Christopher Steele had said to Bruce Orr, these were in the 302s, the FBI interviews with Bruce Orr, where he said Christopher Steele emphatically said he did not want President Trump to win the presidency or to become President of the United States. Here is a foreign, a former, former spy with the British Intelligence Agency, actually actively involved in our own election. And he's doing with this the fourth highest member of the DOJ. And now we have Nellie Orr, his wife, and she's working for Glenn Simpson at Fusion GPS. She is a Russian expert. She speaks Russian fluently, and she's passing information along. And as you see these emails, they reveal this really tight-knit relationship. I was talking to lawmakers today, and they were emphatic about the fact that they needed to bring these people to depose them. They're going to bring them in, in the House Judiciary Committee, the House Oversight Committee, so that they can question them about this relationship and the information that they were passing to the FBI. Well, clearly, clearly they're going to be doing that. Goodland is going to be doing that. But, but Greg Jarrett, I'll go to you. I mean, we know it's a Russian hoax. You wrote the book, The Russian Hoax. <laughs> but the issue is, I think, even more significant. And that is that you've got all of these players, this cabal, this conspiracy uh, of people from the DOJ, the FBI, the Hillary Clinton campaign, Fusion GPS paid for by the right. DNC, teeing up the this Russia collusion investigation. Where does that leave all of these players legally? Well, they, uh, you need a calculator to count all of the <laughs> regulations and laws that have been violated here. Not only did Comey and his Confederates use what they knew was a fake document, the dossier, that was being pushed by the Oars and Christopher Steele and Glenn Simpson. They knew it was phony, but they used it anyway as an excuse to try to destroy Trump, damage his candidacy, remove him from office after elected. 
And in so doing, they violated FBI regulations and, importantly, they perpetrated a fraud on the FISA court. Right. Now, that's abuse of power, which is a felony. It's also a perjury because they swore to the veracity of the document when they presented it mm -hmm. to the court. And then cover up since then. Mm -hmm. That's obstruction of justice. So there are a variety of crimes. I lay them all out in the book. Well, and, and you do it well. And, and Sarah, I'll go back to you. You know, this, this Christopher Steele, uh, who is the, uh, the, the spy who got information from Russia, who mm -hmm. got paid by Hillary and the DNC and Fusion GPS. Now, the FBI says you can no longer give us information. So That's Bruce right. Orr decides that he's going to back channel the information from Christopher Steele. Then Christopher Steele tries to get on the mm -hmm. Mueller team. What does that tell you about the Mueller team and the people on it? Well, it tells us a lot. It tells us that they were in communication with each other, that they were trying to back channel this information. I'd be very concerned about Robert Mueller. I would want to talk to him. But the problem here, Judge Janine, is that there is nobody checking on the people that are actually in charge. We have a DOJ that has nobody above it. So unless the inspector general releases the report this year, which I don't expect, oh. I've actually spoken to people, he is in intensely working on on this Russia report, well, but it I, probably you know, won't come out till next year. Sarah, I don't care how intensely he's working on it. Look what happened with the Comey report. Absolutely. Nothing. Okay, so Greg, I'm going to ask you this: If we've got this guy Christopher Steele, mm -hmm. he's trying to get on the Mueller campaign. Sarah makes a great point, and the point is, but there's nobody looking at this anyway. So, are mm -hmm. we just engaging in un an unnecessary effort? No, I, you know, this is how cover-ups work. The truth is slow to emerge. It takes a long time to do it. We know enough now that it was a cesspool of corruption. Right. Christopher Steele, who fabricated this dossier that drove the Russia hoax, the collusion narrative, this is a guy who admitted in court documents, I, I dug them up out of a right. British court proceeding, <laughs> I, I put it in the book, he basically said that his document wasn't worth the paper it, it was, was written, written on. on. Right. And he said it's unverifiable, principally because it was based on anonymous sources and triple and quadruple hearsay. And the FBI knew this. They didn't care. They wanted so much to stop Donald Trump that they were willing to break the law to do it, to abuse their power, to subvert the rule of law and undermine democracy. Uh, Sarah, and do we know where Christopher Steele is now? Is he in this uh, country? Is he in the UK? Is he in Russia? Where is this guy? He's he's in the UK. According to all the sources I've spoken with, he's in the UK and he's not making himself very public because he's also being sued. Um, and this is the reason why Senator uh, Chuck Grassley with the Senate Judiciary Committee is adamant about getting his, uh, his deposition that he gave in London here to the United States and they're fighting for that now. He, Look, the problem, Judge, the problem, Judge Janine, is here. We have Christopher Steele, a foreign spy, involved in our election, collecting information from the Russians. Once again, if there was any collusion, the collusion was on their part with Russia. There is no evidence that President right. Trump or his campaign was involved in collusion with Russia. Right. And this Christopher is the biggest Steele. problem. Christopher Steele, mm -hmm. did he lie or did he testify here at all? No, no, he hasn't. Uh, now, he has testified in Great Britain in a British uh, proceeding that Sarah referred to. Well, that's prior and consistent statement or possibly the basis for a crime but Congress here. wants, Grassley in particular, wants to get his hands on the transcript of that testimony. Right. Is it now, public? We've already got our hands on the interrogatory answers, which are under oath, right. uh, answers to written questions. But in the deposition, I bet is even more damning of what these people did. All right, guys, I want to move on for one second. CNN Spike Lee, you know, talks about uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, and bullhorn racism, NBC, Trump corruption. Uh, we, we heard it, Space Cowboys. Uh, Mercedes, is it Mercedes Rule is calling uh, Space Cowboys a proposed Space Force. They're dumping on everything that Donald Trump is doing. How, I mean, how are the American people, or are they capable of even knowing what the good things are that this president is doing? 
They're dumping on the American people, Judge Janine. They're not just dumping on the President of the United States. This rhetoric with, without any basis, I mean, it's constant attacks, constant rhetoric, constant going after, and it's, it's reflective in their ratings. It's reflective in the ratings that CNN has. It's reflective in the ratings that MSNBC is now dealing with. The American people are sick and tired of it. They're sick and tired of the divisiveness. They're sick and tired of the lies, and they want something to be rectified, and particularly with what we were discussing. Well, certainly they'll, that'll play out in the midterm elections. But, Greg, what about all this space cowboys making fun of, you know, the next frontier? Well, these are people who are criticizing something they're utterly ignorant about. We actually mm -hmm. already have a space force run by uh, the United States Air Force. The president's idea is to expand it. Currently, the biggest operation is out in El Segundo, California. I've been out there. 6,000 employees run this space defense system to protect our assets in space that are incredibly valuable that if they're ever jeopardized could actually shut down systems in the United States that we rely on daily. So these are ignorant people who are criticizing something they know nothing about. Well, all right. right. Thank you both right. for joining me tonight. And now with more reaction is RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Good evening, Ronna. I, uh, it's good to have you here, and I don't know if you heard the last few minutes where we were talking about how the uh, mainstream media and the media on the left is doing everything they can to criticize the president and what he's doing, calling him, continually calling him every name in the book, while all of this evidence comes out about the real collusion between the left, the FBI, the DOJ, Fusion GPS, Hillary Clinton, and the DNC. Yeah, I mean, their playbook is the same as it was leading up to the 2016 election when they said he couldn't win. They were prognosticating that he had no chance to an electoral victory. Uh, and, and we in the heartland, I'm from Michigan, we saw something completely different. We saw people, uh, we saw a candidate talking about higher wages and better trade and a, and a country that was lifted up for all people. And that's why Donald Trump won. And again, the left, stream, the left wing mainstream media continues to ignore the American people and what we're seeing because of this president. Unemployment at a record low, wages are up, our country is rising again. Good. Keep ignoring the facts because the American people are smarter than that. We feel it and we're going to show it in the midterms. Well, there's no question all the American people need to do is, uh, you know, some, most of them look at their paychecks, but also the consumer confidence and, and, and the G GDP and all that. But in, in 2018, let's turn right to the midterms. I mean, how is it going to play out in the various parts of the country where where, you know, with Steele, Pennsylvania, where the president has just been uh, visiting, and the other states that he intends to campaign in for candidates over the next four months. Well, we've had nine House special elections. We've won eight of those. President Trump is our greatest asset in, in the campaign trail. He energizes our base. He brings an energy to our candidates. And we need that because he goes into Michigan and Ohio and, and other states and he says, listen, we have to fight for what we've just gained. Our country is doing better. Our economy is roaring and jobs are coming back and if we give it to the Democrats they will double down on obstruct and resist and mire us down in investigations and stop this great comeback that is helping every single American you see African American unemployment at the lowest uh, level in history Hispanic unemployment women these are good things for our country and this is what we have to fight for we've won eight out of nine the RNC's on the ground we're in 28 states we've trained 20,000 volunteers we are ready to defy history in these Terms. You know, Rana, as I listen to you, you are one fighter, too. I, I, I think the president really picked the right person for the job Thank that you're you. in. But very quickly, Rana, you know, you know, and we've met at speeches that, that around the country, uh, I always get from people, what's going to happen to all this wrongdoing? How come there are no consequences? What do you say to people who get frustrated watching us talk about all of the collusion, the conspiracy, the Russia hoax? Yeah, I do hear that a lot. One, they are not interested in the Mueller investigation at all. So let's put that aside. They know there's no collusion. You know, we have something in our Constitution called a right to a speedy trial. Boy, but we have investigations that can go on forever. And it's just ridiculous and it needs to end. But they do look at what happened with Hillary Clinton and the DNC funding this fake dossier. And now new revelations coming forward that Glenn Simpson was meeting with Bruce Orr and his wife worked for Fusion GPS. I mean, it's just, it's ongoing and we can't seem to get to the bottom of it. And there is a frustration but I say stick with the president 
put more Republicans in the majority. That's the only way we're going to get this done. We need a bigger majority in the Senate, and we need to send a message to the mainstream media that we're not listening to them. We're listening to the results that are happening on the ground every day that are benefiting the American people. Ronna McDaniel, so good to have you on tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. And coming up on this special edition of Hannity, I'll tell you why the House Judiciary Committee chairman is preparing steel dossier subpoenas. Tammy Bruce and DeRoy Murdoch will have more on that. And don't forget to get your hands on a copy of my new number one New York Times bestselling book, Liars, Leakers and Liberals. And Greg Jarrett is chuckling with me as we both sit here. <laughs> new York Times number one bestsellers. Uh, right. Stay with us. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlad is reportedly preparing to issue subpoenas to individuals connected to the infamous Steele dossier. Among those Chairman Goodlad is seeking to question are former DOJ official Bruce Orr, his wife Nellie Orr, and Fusion GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson. And while Republicans tried to conduct government oversight and actually investigate these abuses of power, many on the left are calling for the Republican Party to be upended. Watch this. That's what needs to happen to the party of Trump. It like needs to Phoenix burn the to National. the ground. It is a total and complete violation of their oaths of office to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You see the Republican Party now, sadly, a portion of its base moving closer and closer to Russia. Left to their own devices, uh, they would just let Russia run wild uh, throughout our democracy and throughout uh, the democracies of our allies. Should Congressman Nunes be removed from his chairmanship of the House Intelligence Committee? Absolutely. He should have been removed a year ago when it was very clear that he was not working in the interest of Congress. If you look at Devin Nunes, you look at some members of the Freedom Caucus, uh, they remind me of the people that we conservatives used to call useful idiots that would fly down to Nicaragua and tell Daniel Ortega in the middle of a hot uh, element of the Cold War that the United States was doing terrible things and were apologizing for Ronald Reagan's anti-communist actions. Joining me now is Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce and Fox News contributor syndicated columnist Dory Murdoch. All right, guys, you know, as the as as Good Life prepares these subpoenas, uh, DeRoy, I mean, it's clear based upon the information that we've just gotten that we're talking about Bruce or his wife, Nellie. Everybody's being paid by the same group fundamentally, you know, with Fusion uh, GPS ends up getting funded by Hillary, the DNC, and it goes on and on and on. So good land issues, these subpoenas. We're going to have hearings and uh, I'm curious to see how Bruce Orr is going to appear. Here. Because for some reason, I have a feeling he's like Peter Strzok, but I could be wrong. I think we need to see how he is in public. I, I hope that they don't just have these uh, meetings behind closed doors. The American public should see these people. We've heard their names for months now. And uh, we need to find out what these people did and why, as members of the Department of Justice, they were behaving more or less like volunteers for the Hillary Clinton campaign. Well, not only volunteers, but I mean, when you think about it, or Tammy was uh, wanted to back channel or launder information from Christopher Steele after the FBI let him go, uh, you know, to the DOJ. Yeah, look, here's what we're finding out, and this is what finally we're seeing it from the GOP, being focused, using subpoenas, have, acting on information they're getting. This is sort of relatively new, but what we're seeing really is finally the, the, the unfolding of the reality of, of an attempt to frame the president-elect, of an attempt then to continue that frame as that man took office, to nullify an American election. And while it is actually frightening to think about, so many people don't even want to go there, but you're looking at not many people at all. Peter Strzok, uh, James Comey, um, uh, this guy. The upper echelon, uh, uh, the FBI, the, 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 the DNC. That's a problem. And also, the but, but for Bruce Orr and his wife, this is what's interesting. People working in different departments, with GPS, with Fusion GPS and with the government, I would remind people, and, and Mary 
Mary Jacoby's name has been on the list on occasion at, uh, for, for, uh, in the House committees. She is the wife of Glenn Simpson. She also worked at the um, uh, uh, law firm with Hillary Clinton, um, the Rose Law Firm. She is a very uh, deeply linked with, with the Clintons. So you have this, again, a, a very small group of people, very incestuous, all having the same framework. And these are people who are committed to the establishment, to what they figured was the next dynamic in line because they had their futures and their retirements you figured know, out. But, and Donald but, Trump ruined it, and that's what they wanted to stop. So, Roy, I mean, when Tammy talks about, you know, this cabal, you know, or I call in my book the, the anti Trump conspiracy, sure. you know, they were committed to their own future, but their roots were so deep. These were not people kind of mid level management, they were right at the top. Very high up. And absolutely. so it tells me, I mean, my prosecutorial instincts tell me that they don't do this unless somebody in that Oval Office uh, is agreeing to it. And I'm worried that they're worried, the left, that we're going to get to that. Mm. It might get to that. I mean, I think at the very minimum, the Attorney General must have known about what was going on just below Loretta? her. Loretta? It could be, yeah. The I mean, one who met with Bill Clinton on bet. the tarmac. Exactly. And well, believe what, it what a strange happen. coincidence that was. But they talked about golf and grandchildren, so yeah, I'm sure course, that was okay. Of 30 minutes. Yeah, but I think in addition to subpoenas, what also would help, and, and President Trump can do his part in, in this, is to declassify as many of these documents that why the Congressional best. Why I don't do know why. I think he may think that, that the public outcry, the outcry from the media left will be too tremendous. What do you but think? they're screaming anyway. So get the documents out. Let's see what's out there. And they're going to yell no matter what. So let's give them a reason to yell. I think he's been advised that it is best to not interfere, to, to ret retreat as much as he can while you see this unfold. Because the American people do want to be able to trust the end result. And we will be able to, if this is done legitimacy, legitimately, that the GOP does its job with its own investigations, and the president shouldn't have to do that. But ultimately, and a Michael Goodwin uh, column says this in the New York Times, in New York Post, is that it is time, in fact, to declassify these documents. Okay. And, and, right. and he may, in Whether fact, Whether it's that time step. to or not, he's not to. But here's the question. Yeah. To give it legitimacy, how is there any conclusion if there's no prosecution and no one's taken out on cuffs? Well, I mean, we're, uh, we could get to that point if we've got, and frankly... If we had an attorney general who had the, uh, the authority well, to do it. Sort of and visible, the isn't of the we, don't, we don't see him he's very much. He's in a closet, yeah, hiding he's, he's somewhere. He's hidden somewhere, and but, he, yeah, and he's right. be out here pushing this thing and moving along. All right, Let, let's talk about these guys. This guy, Goodlatte, uh, not, not Goodlatte, Schmidt, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll go to you, DeRoy. He talks about burning the Republican Party to the ground. This guy was a Republican strategist? Yeah, he was John McCain's campaign manager, Oh, well, there and, you and I guess it. he's a upset because John McCain didn't make it to the White House. But he has this amazing combat for there to be new growth of a conservative movement of a right-center party, the one that I joined in 1988, it needs to be burned to the ground. I, find, I think it's, it's amazing as a conservative, if in fact he is one. We have a president now with 88% support among the GOP. His black support's gone from 15% last year to 29. 29. And why is that? It's because he is implementing a conservative agenda and it's working. Tax cuts, deregulation, the Keystone Pipeline is being built, we're drilling, we're about to drill for uh, oil in Anwar, the U.S. Embassy is in Jerusalem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, 4.1 percent economic growth, unemployment at 3.9 percent, black and Hispanic unemployment at record lows. So okay. these things are working, and this is, with the exception of free trade, where I differ with the president a bit. Right. Other than that, this is a conservative agenda, and every conservative should be, should be delighted things are going that well. His comments from our, confirm our, our, the importance of what happened in 2016, that there was a lot of uh, sound and fury about who was a conservative. It was theater. And those were individuals who, in fact, there was no real commitment to a conservative agenda. It was a commitment to the, to the machine, to the monster that was being created and moving right. forward on both sides when it comes to the Democrats and the Republicans. Donald Trump represented an, a genuine shift into a genuine framework that embraced uh, the conservative ideal, but then also represented the American people, not the machine. And that's why you hear Steve Schmidt now saying it has to be burned to the ground. He is late to the party. Uh, this, you don't he's need to already. Burn. He's he's late. Uh, he is irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, these are individuals who understand this, and they will not be coming back into power. And they must simply accept that and, and embrace the fact that the country is out of its coma and moving forward. You again. know, the interesting be part of this is that you've got people saying that Republicans are putting Trump over country. What is that, O'Donnell? Not that what he says ever makes sense. But uh, what, what do you? Th I mean, I know where he's coming from, but how does that make sense? It, it doesn't make any sense. I think I think Donald Trump is 
doing what's good for this country in terms of our economy, in terms of our uh, overseas respect, uh, in terms of pro uh, projecting American force where necessary. ISIS has shrunk down to a few hundred acres, whereas they were a terrifying force a couple years ago. This is good for America. It's good for Donald Trump politically, but it's good for this country. And these two things can go hand in hand. You know, I remember a couple of years ago, everybody was worried someone was going to show up with a butcher knife, yell, Allahu Akbar, you'd be minus your head. Absolutely. Now Lawrence nobody even thinks about, about it. About Ten anymore. seconds. Now, Lawrence O'Donnell apparently thinks that everyone else is as, as uninformed as his own audience. <laughs> everyone else knows right. in real life what the president has done. So he's speaking in, in a little tiny chamber, uh, but we in the meantime are moving forward and support the president because right. we like this country being Thank uh, you to both of you. you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, DeRoy. And up next, Judicial Watch is suing the Department of Justice. I'll have more on this new legal action from Tom Fitton himself, David Avella, and Doug Schoen as this special edition of Hannity continues. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Columnist Byron York is reporting on newly discovered communications which show a relationship between Christopher Steele, Bruce Orr, and a Russian oligarch during the 2016 election. Watch this. The dossier's author, Christopher Steele, that former British spy, was in touch with an official at the Justice Department, Bruce Orr, a lot earlier than we thought. They were exchanging emails in January of 2016. And what was interesting here is that Steele was writing to, to uh, Bruce Orr at the Justice Department, and he was talking about a Russian oligarch, Oleg Deripaska. Mid-year 2016, Christopher Steele says to, to Orr, we need to talk. I need to talk to you about some other business, but I specifically want to discuss with you informally and separately, um, and it concerns our favorite business tycoon. And now most people who have read this believe that's Donald Trump. Oh, Trump, of course. Because that's just a few days before Christopher Steele actually tells the FBI, gives them the first installment of his dossier, which is that famous Moscow hotel room scene. Meanwhile, Judicial Watch is suing the Justice Department for communications between Bruce Orr, Nellie Orr, Christopher Steele, and Fusion GPS. Joining me now with more is Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton, GOPAC Chairman David Avella, and Fox News contributor, former Clinton pollster Doug Schoen. Okay, um, you know, we've got this uh, link between Steele, Orr, and the Russia oligarch. Uh, but there seems that there's no way for Congress to get information uh, in their oversight attempts. There's no way uh, the Justice Department is giving information via freedom of information. The only way we're getting information now is, as usual, through Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch. All right, so now, Tom, you get all this information about the oligarch and Christopher Steele. Wh what is that about? Well, look, uh, Christopher Steele, it uh, looks like, was working with Fusion GPS even back then, which we have to remember was representing uh, Putin interest in court in, in, uh, here in the United States, uh, trying to target Putin's critics. And the key Putin critic that re led to the Majinsky Act that was uh, famously discussed at the Trump Tower meeting. So you had these Putin interests pushing uh, uh, obviously, it looks like the Justice Department trying to push it on the Trump campaign. Uh, uh, this uh, approach to uh, removing mm. the Bajinsky Act that was uh, curtailing um, the, uh, the rights of oligarchs in, in Russia uh, in terms of a sanctions uh, regime and impositions of sanctions. So uh, the irony here is that Fusion GPS was working for the Clinton camp uh, to target Trump, also working for the Putin camp. Uh, to uh, target uh, the government generally in terms of getting this Majinsky Act. Well, away. But, but then it, it, it suggests, David, that the um, Russians would be colluding with Christopher Steele to make Trump look bad. The Democrats right now, Judge, are pushing the biggest blame shift or blame the victim strategy that we have ever seen in political history. Most Americans don't know who Steele or this Russian oligarch are. Yet a convincing number of them now realize there were people working for Hillary Clinton who would say or do anything to keep Donald Trump from being president. And it only underscores why Hillary Clinton had the lowest approval rating of any candidate in presidential history.
You know, Judicial Watch, Doug, we find yeah. out, um, found out after Steele had been fired by the FBI, that Bruce Orr met with him sure. to launder information to get back to the FBI, but it gets even better. Orr was trying to get uh, Steele back to the FBI as an informant or a human confidential source, whatever they call him, but more importantly, he was trying to get him on the Mueller team. This cabal, right. they're all incestuous. Yeah, you know, I, I guess my position as somebody in the middle here is all of these documents that Tom Fenton and Judicial Watch are seeking, it strikes me in the interest of justice, not partisanship, right. ought to be released so we know what the facts are. That'll exactly. help us judge every aspect of this increasingly murky case. You know, I, um, I, I, Tom, I, Tom, let, let me just ask you this, because what Doug says is so true. No one has questioned any of the information you've unearthed. You know, no one is saying it's not true, it's not this, it's not that. But every day we have to fight for everything. To what end are you getting this information? Obviously to get the information out. We know that in the public square. But what do you want ultimately, Tom? You're working your butt off here. Well, we think the corruption scandal of our time is this targeting of Trump using the FBI and DOJ in league with the uh, Clinton camp and uh, Russia interests uh, to spy on him and try uh, to destroy now his presidency. And uh, I frankly think Congress is walking around or trying to talk around Mueller's involvement in all this. Steele was part of the Mueller operation. Remember, Judicial Watch uncovered the FISA warrant application signed by Rod Rosenstein Mm -hmm. In June yeah. of 2006, 17, last year, yep. right in the middle of the Mueller operation, Mueller was using Rosenstein, uh, excuse me, Steele's information, source number one, the Fusion GPS dossier that Steele helped create to justify spying on Carter Page of the Trump team, or you know, who had been formerly with the Trump team. Mueller has a lot of questions to answer about his relationship with Steele, his use of that material. Because I'm convinced Mueller was pursuing the Clinton DNC dossier all through his investigation. And it's all based on corruption. And this is why Mueller needs to be confronted directly. I would like to see Congress bring him in and ask him questions about his use and misuse wow. of these sources. Wow. Okay. Does Congress have the authority to bring him in? Of course they do. It's fear-based decision-making in Congress. They are protecting Mueller at the leadership level. And he needs to be held to account the way every other government bureaucrat in this I town I like the way you think, Tom Fitton. David, what's your response to that? Uh, Democrats thought they were going to bring havoc to Republicans this year in the elections by pushing this shifting the blame, blaming the victim strategy. And the reality is it's, it is one thing that is motivating base Republican voters to go to the polls to make sure that Republicans get a fair chance in this election. Doug, you're the pollster. What's going to ha You're the Democratic you know, pollster. What's going to happen? I think at this point the Democrats have a clear advantage. And the reason is it's not so much that this investigation or these issues we've been talking about are impacting voters. I don't think they are. It's that there has been a sideshow for the Republicans that's taken emphasis off the economy, off the tax cuts, and off the benefits. And if I could offer my Republican friends some free advice, talk about the economy, talk about the, pro the progress. In 1982, the Republican slogan under Ronald Reagan was stay the course. The Republicans need something like that. Otherwise, the Democrats will take the House, which is where things stand now. You know, David Avella, you are the, uh, the head of GOPAC. I mean, you, you have your, your uh, tentacles all across the country in terms of state legislators. What do you think of what Doug just said? The idea of stepping on our own good news story by going after this Russia collusion. Does he have a point? Oh. He does have a point. We do need to be talking about the economy. But let's also keep in mind, and the Democrats keep talking about, oh, we're going to pick up, you know, if we win 17 state legislative seats, we pick up eight legislative chambers across the country. Judge, if Republicans pick up 11 seats, we pick up six more chambers, and we already have 67 of 99. We'd have 72 of 99. This battlefield is every bit as competitive for Republicans as it is for the Democrats. Democrats, and the key will be which base turns out to vote. Well, I, and I think Doug was really talking about his, you have the historic, uh, the precedent advantage. Tom, where are you going next? 
Oh, we're fighting the FBI over text messages for the corrupt FBI official Andrew McCabe. The FBI doesn't want to turn over one text message to us. They this don't blows want to my mind. This blows my mind. The president appoints Christopher Wray. The first time he testified before Congress, Christopher Wray does the dance. Well, you know, we'll hand you the stuff over. So now we have to not just ask for a FOIA. We have to we have to sue in a lawsuit. All right, I think I had the last word. <laughs> anyway, guys, Tom Fitton, Doug Show, and <laughs> David Avella. Thanks for being with Thank us you. tonight. All right. Now, Rudy Giuliani says Mueller's case is about to blow up. Coming up, I have Charlie Kirk and Dan Bongino to break this down. Plus, don't forget my book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy, available wherever books are sold. Stay with us. Robert Mueller is a greater threat to this republic and the Constitution than anything Vladimir Putin did during the campaign. And I'm no fan of Vladimir Putin. So what questions exactly does Mr. Mueller have? I'm talking to you, Mr. Mueller, exactly what questions that you have where you seek to turn this country upside down and disenfranchise the over 60 million people who voted for this president of the United States? You are a plaything of the media. You are a plaything of the Democrats. You are a plaything of people within the Obama administration who sought from day one to take this president down. The real story here is not that this case isn't going to fizzle. It's going to blow up on them. The real question is what we talked about before. There's a lot more to what they did that nobody knows about yet. I know a lot, more, a lot more to the obstruction of justice, mm -hmm. to the collusion, to the fake dossier, oh, I know to trying lot. to bring Steele back in after he was completely discredited. And then feed it to Mueller. Yeah. And uh, Mueller is going to have a lot to answer for. That was attorney for the president, Rudy Giuliani and Mark Levin on this program, both with tough words for special counsel Robert Mueller. Joining me now with reaction, author of the upcoming book, Spygate, the attempted sabotage of Donald J. Trump, former Secret Service agent and NRA TV contributor, our friend Dan Bongino, and Turning Point USA founder, our friend also Charlie Kirk. All right, uh, Dan, you're sitting here. I'll, I'll ask you this. You know, is Mueller a greater threat than Putin to this country? Well, he's a serious threat. He's based his entire operation, the investigation of Donald Trump, on a sham. I mean, Judge, let's just use the FBI's own words, right? The head of the FBI, talking about the bedrock of the case, the dossier, said it's salacious and unverified. The number two in the FBI said they'd have no case if it wasn't for the salacious and unverified dossier. The guy in charge of the division working the case says we verified it but we were only in its infancy and the lead investigator in the case in a text to his girlfriend stroke says there's no there there they're investigating trump for nothing all garbage. right and and you know what and struck even thought about not going on Mueller's team because there was no there there and he wouldn't come out with a great uh, indictment Mueller greater threat than putin charlie well, look, it's tough to say Miller is doing so much damage to this country right now. And what I'm focused on, and I don't, I don't hear enough conversation about this, is who approved Mueller in the first place? It was Republicans in Congress that decided to appoint the special prosecutor with basic unlimited authority, unlimited power to go after the president. What have they turned up? Well, they found Paul Manafort not on Russian collusion, which was the original intent of the special prosecutor, but on tax and wire fraud. They have zero, none interference, no evidence whatsoever. And talking about Mueller, you look at his background. He was a flawed investigator. He was a flawed head of the FBI. He prevented victims from 9-11 from suing Saudi Arabia. He, he botched the 9-11 intelligence. He bossed the anthrax ca case back in the 1990s. And now he has unlimited power and authority that asks the question, why are Republicans in Congress continuing to renew his funding, well, not not using oversight and going after him. Well, you know what's interesting is is Congressman DeSantis, who is very often on this show on my show, Justice, offered an amendment where uh, the Mueller investigation would be defunded after six months uh, or you know whatever period of time could be agreed on. And of course, Paul Ryan and the leadership wouldn't allow it to go forward. Uh, so Dan, I mean, you know, the Republicans and even Chuck Grassley in the Senate had talked about a bill where they would be able to uh, prevent the president in the event he tried to fire Mueller. So you've got, you've got, the, uh, you've got the Ryan
rhinos, you've got people who are supporting Mueller, but this thing is going on and on. Isn't Charlie right? I mean, why are we funding this ridiculous thing where they're trying a case in federal court that has nothing to do with their charge? Because Bob Mueller's not investigating a crime, Judge. He's investigating Donald Trump. There's a difference. When I was a Secret Service agent, you can't walk into the Secret Service office and say, you know what, I don't like Judge Jeanine, investigator. For what? I don't know. We'll find something. What you do is you walk in and you say, hey, investigate Johnny Appleseed or whatever. He stole a car last night. And then you do. Right. They're investigating Trump. They don't have anything. They have zero on Donald Trump. There's no real case. There's no there there. Right. And you know, Charlie, when, when they try to do this investigation of Donald Trump, uh, you, you know, it seems that, you know, as I say in my book, you point one finger, three fingers are pointing back at you. And that's what's happening with the Russia collusion investigation. So uh, when Rudy Giuliani and the sound that we had right before we started, he said, this thing is going to blow up. Well, I believe it based on what we've seen in the revelations this week with Bruce or Nelly or Christopher Steele and, and, and the rest of those bozos, Glenn Simpson. But to what end? Where are we going? Right, exactly. And you, in your book, which is fantastic, by the way, you point out all the deep state actors against this president that have been continually working here. And going back to Bob Mueller, we can't forget that he put Peter Strzok as his lead investigator of the Russia investigation until all this came out. And if it wasn't for Devin Nunes, who's actually doing a wonderful job in transparency, we would never have even known about those text messages. And so this is, this is such an important point, and Dan hit it out of the park. This is a political assassination, an attempted political assassination against the president, using the special prosecutor to try to filibuster and demagogue his success. But again, the Republicans authorize this. The Republicans in Congress right now could say, Bob Mueller, you got 90 days. Let's see what you got. Then the funding is gone. Yep. Congress has the oversight capacity authority and prerogative to do their job and they're letting him run reckless but and Charlie, roughshod into the disgrace. problem is that Paul Ryan who's not running again who's not who, you know he just he's lame duck right now and he won't step aside and let someone else come in and he's stopping everything from uh, uh, like this from happening you're right. Here's the great irony, super quick, is they wouldn't have their majority if it wasn't for President Donald Trump. He carried them to a majority in these states. Pat Toomey would not be a senator if it wasn't for Donald Trump in Pennsylvania. Paul Ryan would not have been Speaker of the House. And then they appoint the one thing that is obstructing his agenda and obstructing his legitimacy. It is, it is beyond words and comprehension. The lame duck's a great point. We need the House of Representatives to defund the Mueller investigation. They have found nothing against this president. All right, so defund the investigation. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen. Then you've got the other issue of it's going to blow up and Rudy Giuliani suggesting there's even more stuff to come. And, you know, I was thinking about it. You know, who would have thunk eight months ago that we'd be this far in terms of what's going on? But this far is taking us where? Well, there's three sub-scandals in this. There's the information laundering operation by the FBI, the spying operation, and the framing of Donald Trump in the beginning and his team. What's going to come out next, I believe, is that the information superhighway, the laundering operation, was in fact Democrats and people they paid for working with Russian oligarchs and in fact colluding against Donald Trump. There is Russian collusion, Judge. It's real. Oh, it's just no amongst question. the Democrats. There's no question about that anymore. It is It's just amazing. the level of it that matters. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Dan. All right, and coming up... More of this special edition of Hannity right after the break. Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have left this evening. Be sure to pick up a copy of my new number one New York Times bestseller, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. If you want to know what's going on with this Russia collusion, delusion, nonsense, you got to get it. Don't forget to tune into Justice tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Mark Levin, Michelle Malkin going to join me. Plus, I've got a barn burner of an open. Sean is back on Monday. The Ingram Angle is next. Have a terrific weekend.